This application is known as roll to roll, where we're going to put an over laminate on top of an adhesive back vinyl that's been printed with our images. So the first thing I do is open the cradle, I'm going to bring the supply shaft out, and then I'll load the over laminate on that shaft. There are two ways that film is wound on the core, and that is what's known as poly in or poly out. In this case, ours is poly in, and that means that the liner is on the inside of the, the roll. Poly out is the liner is going to be on the outside, which means that it's going to be loaded in the opposite direction we will this one. So this is going to unroll from the bottom as it goes through the machine. I'll get this centered up as closely as possible. And then we're going to go around to the front and load up our vinyl, our printed vinyl. Now I'm going to load my printed media onto the bottom supply unwind shaft. So I'll raise my table, open the cradle, and pull out the bottom supply shaft. Because printed vinyl is very slick, and it has a tendency to telescope on you. So today, I'm going to use my media alignment discs we can, so we can prevent that from happening. So I'll slide that one on. Then I'll take my media, and this is an adhesive back vinyl. It's printed on one side, has a, an adhesive on the other side with a release liner. So this is, the media is printed to the outside, so it's going to unwind the opposite direction that the film is unwinding. So I'll take this and I'll put it on and you can see how easily that telescoped. I'll slide this over, put my other disc on, and then I'll look, check it for Centering this. I'm going to tighten this down. And then I'm going to tap this side, make sure we're nice and square. Once I have this in place, I'll go ahead and close the supply shaft. Set that in place. Now, to ensure that I have everything lined up properly, I'm going to bring my top roll of over laminate down and just measure it against this. Make sure that we've got it nice and even. So, peel my tape off. Bring this down. Lift my table. Bring it down and check. And as you can see, I've got that pretty close. I might move that over just a hair. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Now I'll go ahead and rewind this. Okay, so now we'll attach the film release liner to this rewind tube. So I'm going to pull this up, like this, and what I'll do, I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to twist it 180 degrees in what's called a bow tie so that I have adhesive on one side and adhesive on the other. I will attach that to the cardboard tube, and then I'm going to attach the film right to that, the release liner part. Now at this point, you have two options. You can either try to separate the film from the liner and bring it down the way it is. A lot of times, you have a lot of problems with that film separating at this point. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give it a wrap like this. 
then I'll take my knife. I'm going to lightly score the film. I don't want to cut through the liner. Okay, now that I have the film scored, I'll go ahead and separate that from the release liner. And once I do get it separated all the way across, I'm going to let it drape over the roller, raise my feed table, bring this down just like that, and just let it cling to the roller. I want to make sure that I have my, my uh, top roller raised all the way. We'll let that just sit right there. Now, I'll take the media and bring that up. So I want to go back behind this idle bar. If I don't go behind this idler bar, what's going to happen is the film and the, the, the media aren't going to line themselves up properly side to side. And then what will happen is you start to get skewing and wrinkling and all kinds of stuff happening and you can end up just ruining your prints. So once I have this set, what I'm going to do is bring it up and I'm going to tack it right to that film just like this. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack and I'm going to push this in. And what I'm looking for is to make sure that the film and the media are nice and flat and flush to the rollers on the top and the bottom. And once I see I have that, I'm going to hold that in place. I'm going to bring that top roller down. And when I feel that top roller touch, that bottom roller, I note the position of this handle on my hand wheel and I go one number on the face of a clock. At this point, I'm going to lower my feed tray. I'm going to take up my excess on my release liner. Now a couple things at this point. This is a top heat assist machine so to help reduce the silvering as the machine is running I'm going to add a little bit of heat to it. Not a lot. We'll take it up to about 95 degrees and what that does is it softens up the adhesive which allows it under pressure to get down into the valleys of the inks and toners, whatever type of media that you're running through the machine so that your silvering is reduced uh, right away and then instead of like a day or two uh, for all the silvering to go away, it's usually gone in 15 minutes to two hours. Okay. So once I have that set, I'm going to go ahead and start with my foot pedal. Make sure that it's coming out the back side. Hit run. Release the foot pedal. At this point, I want to start looking at the film and the media and I'm looking for rivers and wrinkles and stuff like that. I'm also watching this release liner because I'm going to take, make some adjustments with my clutch and I'm going to make some adjustments with my brakes. So you can see how I'm letting this liner float out here. You don't want to have it so tight that it's starting to pull the film up and rewinding onto the rewind tube. Likewise, you don't want to see this release liner being pulled into the rollers. So you have a clutch that's on the liner 
you have a break that's on the film. And you balance those out so that you have, you don't have so much pressure or so much tension on the film that you're shrinking it. You know, it's, it's called necking um, because the film has a memory. And if you go too far with too much break, what'll happen is, is at a later date, that film will try to go back to its original memory. And especially if it's on a rivet, rigid, rigid substrate, it will, it will try to pop off. So at this point, I'm going to get ready to attach the web to my tube on my rewind assembly. So I'll line up my tube, make sure it's, it's lined up properly. And you can see that this was all the waste that I had right here when I did that web up. So it makes it, uh, makes it very nice. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Then I'll take a few pieces of tape. I'll attach the web to that rewind tube. So I'll do one in, in the middle and one out on both sides. I'll start in the middle. Get that one attached. Then I'll go out to one of the sides. It doesn't matter, right or left. You just want to make sure you do both of them like that. Once I see that that's set up, now I'm going to slide my slitter over, lock it in place, run my blade down, And then do the same thing with the other side. Now you can, you can get extra slitter heads. So in this case, we have three up. I can actually put two more slitters over here in the center, and now I can slit all, web, all three webs at the same time. 